We'll get to Gorka, but first, uh, mm. I want to do this. The Sinclair Media, we have been talking about this. I don't know what the, I think there's, uh, I, I think it's still an open comment period, but I'm not even sure. Where Ajit Pai, the new head of the FCC, he was one of the uh, commissioners. A big Now, it is, it is true. I think there were two or three uh, Democrats who voted uh, for this guy's uh, nomination, but uh, they had no ability to stop it, as you know, because there is a filibuster proof. Um, uh, confirming executive appointees are filibuster proof. So m largely meaningless. The most meaningful uh, uh, determinant as to why Ajapai is the commissioner is, of course, because Donald Trump, as opposed to Hillary Clinton, was appointed. This Ajapai is going to uh, attack net neutrality. But one of the things they also did was they reinterpreted a rule that was supposedly... Um, supposed to recognize that UHF stations and, and, and the fact that many of you don't even know what I'm talking about is indicative of why this is such a uh, BS that UHF stations were not worth the same as VHF stations when applied to a limit of how much clearance you could have around the country for your television stations. UHF, you used to have to go and jerry-rig your rabbit ears so that as you're dialing into channel 38 or channel 27 or channel 56 or channel 22, that your rabbit ears, you had to stand there and then string some t uh, tin foil over it so you could get decent reception in because they had much lo uh, smaller signals. Today, if there's a UHF channel, you don't know it's a UHF channel because it's just on your cable system. So the idea that that shouldn't count uh, against um, the limit for how, uh, how large of a media outlet you can have across the country. So now, 75%, I think it is, places in the country, you can get a Sinclair-owned television station telling you stuff, not be aware that this is a national outfit, not be aware that it is a right wing outfit, not be aware that they made a deal with the Trump administration when it was still a campaign to give them more favorable coverage. Google it. Kushner was bragging about it in October. So here is um, the Sinclair affiliate in St. Louis. This is these are the ones who ran the the. The documentary on uh, Hillary Clinton. I think they were involved in Citizens United. I think it was, uh, or maybe these are the Swift Boaters. These I guys were Swift, Swift Boat uh, documents. Was, yeah. Here it is, Sinclair affiliate in St. Louis, trying to expose the Clinton uranium scandal, which has been ongoing for years, living only in the most fevered right wing swamps and those swampy places that actually think they're on the left the final word and there is a russian dude in jail right now after being convicted of bribery there is money being handed over to an american foundation an american entity and vladimir putin is perhaps stronger than ever on the world stage as a result of what was going on and none of it involves donald trump or his campaign. Huh. No wonder we're not hearing much about the story of the big uranium deal. That's right, the media apparently is ignoring all of this, at least most of the media is, and my suggestion is because it involves President Obama, not President Trump. It involves Hillary Clinton, not President Trump. Eric Holder, not President Trump. You see, the deal here is, and there ought to be hearings on this, and hopefully there will be on this, because heaven knows we were hearing stories about Jim Comey and having hearings on that, and stories about this campaign collusion and hearings on that, but so far, no hearings on the big uranium deal that allowed Vladimir Putin to take over 20% of our uranium supplies. 20%. Now, why we're handing over uranium to a guy who apparently is one of our big mortal enemies, isn't that what the Democrats and all the people on the left call him and the media and everything else? Because President Trump dares to say nice things or a nice thing about Putin, and suddenly he is a horrible person. But we're cutting deals with the guy, giving him 20% of our uranium, and there's not 
a little smattering of coverage on this story that could involve kickbacks to the Clinton Foundation, could involve some illegal activity on the part of some entities in the swamp, in the deep state, and could involve some really embarrassing details about how President Obama and Hillary Clinton operated. And yet there's nothing being reported. This is a huge story. And there will be some folks who are getting a hold of this in the media. But more importantly, we need our government, our elected representatives to hold hearings on this once and for all and get to the bottom of it. Pay attention to the story here and maybe at Fox and maybe on Breitbart and maybe in the U.S. Senate. But you won't hear it anywhere else. So, Oh, that should be your first clue about why this is such BS. This is a story. That came from the book Clinton Cash, which this guy Schweitzer, who worked with Bannon, propagated as real investigative journalism. The story, and you can find this debunked just about anywhere online, is about a mining company that was based in South Africa that merged with a Canadian company who sold 51% of its holdings to Russia's nuclear agency. When uh, that happens, because it involved uranium, uh, the State Department had to sign off on it. It was maybe in part owned uh, by the United States. Hillary Clinton and about 12 other members of the cabinet, maybe it was 11, had to sign off on this deal that allowed Russia's nuclear agency to have a financial stake in a company. That um, uranium was not handed over to Putin it is still where it always was. <laughs> it's still, I think, in this country. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission. It's even more dangerous. Had a statement, yes. And this is back, I think, in, uh, I'm not sure when this was. NRC's review of the transfer of control request determined that the U.S. subsidiaries will remain the licensees, will remain qualified to conduct the uranium recovery operations, and will continue to have the equipment, facilities, and procedures necessary to protect public health and safety and to minimize danger uh, to life or property. The review also determined that the licensees will maintain adequate financial surety for eventual decommissioning of the sites. Neither Uranium One nor ARMZ holds an NRC export license, so no uranium produced at either facility may be exported. So they simply are own a piece of the business, not the actual uranium. Now, in Clinton Cash, it was made to believe that the, um, the Russians then also contributed to Hillary Clinton's, but the timing is way off. Sure, just carry water. My whole, my wife's entire criminal enterprise. So, um... Anybody needs to die behind this, Sam? You have no ethics. You all you saw need to do, Seth Rich in the eye, head and shot him. In look the at face. Snopes. Look anywhere to get this debunked. But the the point of this is not to debunk this thing because it's just going to keep going on. The point of it is to let you know when you wonder why there is a significant portion of this country that believes fantasy and ridiculousness. You just witness it because their local television. Their local television station is essentially the functional equivalent of the Rush Limbaugh show. Or Literally telling them to go to Breitbart and Fox News. Unbelievable. As far as I'm concerned, if white people want to trade uranium with each other, fine. Play around with uranium, devils. <laughs> Back to the caves. Light, light, the, light the snow caps up. Speaking of inbred, which, pig grafted, pork eaten, in, <laughs> incest ridden swine, I'm beside myself. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. 
YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.